What's good, YouTube and Twitch? We're live to both with a video discussion that's been really interesting me, and that's that we're in a break my board format once again. The FTKs have gone, and now it's setting up to either be I'm going to make my board and answer it, or actually having the option to go second and answer those boards. A lot of decks are surprisingly thriving off of going second once again. Something we really saw during Spiral format, but it's interesting to see that it's during diversity that this is happening, rather than a singularity like with Spiral. So let's go ahead and get into why this is happening, how this is happening, and why certain decks are thriving off of this. We start with, uh, in general, the dangers. What the OCG is missing from this formula, and it's really powering Thunder Dragons, but it was in 12, I believe, of the top cut, including Pure Dangers, and this really enables boards to be built. They're always extenders and hand fixers, so they help with consistency, but they also help with getting to the board that is there. Saryuja in tandem with these, they're different names, they help access different things th that you need for Saryuja, is another hand fixer and extender for you on top of this. So this allows some of the craziest scenarios, such as with the Guard Dragon engine, instead of Guard Dragon the deck, for you to get negates out that have to be answered, alongside Mass Massive floodgates that self-protect. So this is kind of the reason why Thunder Dragon is one of the top decks. It's not only saying, ha ha, you've got to get through me, you can't search through your deck, but you also have to fight through the negates that I am presenting to you. Now, there is another spectrum to the Break My Board Dot deck, and that's the control decks that we're seeing in the format. Guru Control took two of the top slots, and while Altergeist is missing, by no means is it any kind of a weaker deck. It's still going to be tough hopping this format later on and got a boost with Pot of Extravagance. So you're able to sit behind Floodgates, control, and react, and it's still saying, you've got to break my board, but through back row rather than monsters. We're seeing two different kinds of break my board dot decks and the, the manner of trying to, the control aspect, trying to choke out the opponent as it were, rather than just trying to say, hey, uh, I, I, I put my board please answer. Now, there is one other element, and it uses back row too. The Sky Strikers set up, and they set up with a lot of back row, but they like to play back and forth, rebuild their board as it were, and it's not so much break my board as you've got to break me, the deck. You've got to take care of the deck. We saw 10 of these enter top cut, though, at Chicago, and it went down to just two of them in top 16, versus the 10 Thunder Dragons going down to six Thunder Dragons. Like, the consistency was insane. Now, another thing that that kind of makes that break my board field from the extra deck is the Phantom Knights rank up magic launch with options such as DDD duo Don King Kaliuga and more familiarly as a thought so it gives some of these decks that actually like to go second a going first option to shut down the opponent for their entire turn and it builds the board during their turn but it's still saying break my board like can you answer this uh, you know I have the rank up magic you know that I probably searched and set this and have access to these two. Now, how are you going to deal with it? Are you going to, say, have a Prankratops that you can summon and kind of pop the target? Or do I have two targets? How well have I set up with something like Time Thief Redoer? And it really just depends how everything's going to go there. But it's still saying, I'm building a board answer me, break me. So that's where we're getting into the metagame, where we're seeing a lot of different decks either thrive or build that board. One rogue deck is Pendulums. Five negates! Best deck ever, brother! You've got to answer everything! And, and that's awesome, that's cool, and, and it's something a rogue deck provides. Uh, the... We also have going second decks that really thrive off this. Several of them, including one that was able to win the entire event, but also prank kids thrive on breaking boards. Cyber dragons thrive on breaking boards, and we're seeing these in top cut for a very good reason. They can also play going first when forced to go first, but they thrive on you setting up the board and being able to attack, able to slurp, able to answer boards. And many side decks are set up to uh, quote-unquote break the boards with 
with Denko Seca being a major searchable option for certain Thunder decks, but hard drawing it against a deck like Guru Control or against Alter Guys have really changed their style of play to uh, Alter Guys saying, well, I'm going to flip that Floodgate in the standby phase. Hold on there. Uh, I'm going to play ahead. So they have to let you know what's coming and you get your options to potentially deal with it if you've been side decking. Like you, you now know what you're going to have to face down and take care of. Also in the Break My Board culture, we do have the Kaijus back with three Kaiju Slumber. And we did see Kaijus in a lot of decks like Crusadia Guard Dragon is actually able to naturally fit these into the deck to help make them a going second deck. Another rogue option that was able to top not just once. Uh, I believe it's twice. I, or was it Pure Crusadia? I know two Crusadia decks in general, but I think one was Guard Dragon and one was Pure. And we've really seen this consolidation of where things are going. It's, I'm going to build the board you break it or it's going i'm going second and i'm going to break that board and i don't think we've seen a format this diverse this crazy where we're looking to go second and break boards like i've said it's pretty crazy that you have so many options for going second now between crusadia between cyber dragons between prank kids between luna lights all these going second options and all these going first options that actually play in different ways such as pendulums such as sky strikers such as the control decks such as the decks with just going out and putting massive monsters on boards you have so many different ways to play Yu-Gi-Oh now through this and there's something kind of odd arising because of this play style uh we have hand traps kind of disappearing through this and dissipating the hand traps are kind of just shrugging off like ash blossom isn't enough to answer the danger cards ash blossom's not enough to stop these decks there's not a correct place to really ash and even impermanence is falling out of some deck list when we look at it now people are starting to talk a lot about droll and it's not like it's solidified its place in the format but they're saying this is the best hand trap this is the best answer there's going to be this is going to be the future of the game right now now, and I'm kind of skeptical like called by the grave is even shrinking in certain lists because the hand traps themselves are dropping and certain hand traps like Cyframe gamma can't even be hit by called by the grave so it's really interesting to see the diversity and shrinking of hand traps as well like I remember when formats like this where going second was an option hand traps were played as like 10 12 16 of the freaking cards but now they're disappearing from these lists and we're still saying okay you go ahead I've got this later like we're really sinking to this place in Yu-Gi-Oh to where the diversity says well not sinking I consider it actually rising but we're going to this place in Yu-Gi-Oh where hand traps are kind of being power crept naturally by the way that Yu-Gi-Oh is going they're still viable they're still going to be in top cut decks but not as in men as many now we also have the salmon grades coming another break my board deck weird surprise that likes to resource over and over and really is a lot better than i first gave it credit for but at the same time i don't think it's taking more than three top cut slots at oics despite how represented this could be from being such a budget deck and it, it's still a break my board deck that fits in with the rest of them and i don't think with sky striker full power thunder dragon still so powerful over here that they're just gonna meld in and take the largest cut of the pie for top cut i don't think that's going to be happening but it will be interesting to see another break my board dot deck going in and entering these formats and uh, again i just want to go through like some of the rogue decks options from the extra decks that really help the going second decks uh we even had abc which is a break my board dot deck i'm putting buster out one of the coolest cards going out i almost left that out of the rogue options yes another deck that thrives on going first and saying break my board exists here there's just so much that it's actually crazy so i don't think one deck's gonna come in from a structure deck and wreck everything but i do think it's going to present another viable option for it now we have crusadia equimax a negation card that's actually better in a going second build but gives options to going first we have long Gearsu and topologic bomber dragon comboing together for a good old attack deck with ediception and the orcus that he was playing he basically called it attack deck and it was meant for breaking boards it was meant for going second it was meant for tearing down things so there's another another going second option we had the prank kids and you just have that natural ability to build the board but really you're building the board to end up breaking down things you're you're taking out everything when you're building up it's it's pretty crazy and of course ooh, the queen leo Lu luna light leo dancer got ahead of myself there she is able to just go in and slash down things and you don't even have to concentrate on fusioning in luna 
Luna Lights, but man, does she go the heck in. So we're at a point where we saw Furman's list coming back full circle here with the Winged Dragon of Raw Sphere Mode prepared. It reminded me of when, like, you had the older SJC days and... Players would test the format heavily, and they would not only build the next deck that people weren't prepared for, they would prepare for the other decks that people were building that they could see being problematic. So the fact that Sphere Mode was prepared for this format by a top competitor like Furman really tells me where we're going in the future. It tells me where we're headed with these diversities in these formats, and it's pretty cool. Uh, chat, thank you for being here with me during the live streams and these discussions. Hopefully you've been enjoying them. Subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the like button on this conversation if you're watching it not in real time from stream on YouTube. But what do you guys think? Like, yeah, we've had those break my board formats before, but I don't really think with this kind of a diversity and this many options for going second. Like, going second is such a stronger thing now than it ever has been before, and you really kind of get to pick and choose your character, even though there's huge chunks of that top cut pie taken by decks like Thunder Dragon and Sky Striker, you really can top with pretty much whatever you want to be topping with, unless you're playing Ice Barriers, Duelist, or, or Crawlers.